Hey folks, Kiltman here, Kiltman, at your service. Welcome, one, welcome all, to Kiltie's Tavern. Bar's open, and the liquor's good. Um, yeah, you may notice we have a new bartender. Endo, it's Endo from Liverpool FC. Yeah, because tonight is the night when we raise the trophy. Yes, having won the league. Bigger stars than Dallas. Got more silver than Buckingham Palace. Yeah. But this video isn't about the Reds. <laughs> no, it's not. What this is, um, it's twofold. First of all, I asked Mrs. Kiltman to find my American Werewolf t-shirt. Yes, I know. He's not banging on about American Werewolf again, is he? A little bit. Um, because Steve W7 Smith sent that gorgeous um, embroidered throw wall covering from you know American Wealth, which I did a video on, so you've seen it. And by the way, it's just there, it's in the window. <laughs> That's where it's hanging now. And uh, so I wanted to wear, I've got a few American Wealth t-shirts, normally with the slaughtered lamb pub sign emblazoned on it. But there's one which is, you know, it's got some great imagery on it. And uh, could I find it? Could I L find it? Mrs. Kiltman, please, while I take the, the husky dog, our own werewolf, were husky, out for a yomp and a chomp, can you uh, can you try and find it? And she did, she found it. And I did wear it on a video, but she didn't just find the t-shirt, she found something which ties in with it. But anyway, for a second, I will show you the t-shirt in question, because it's quite a good one. On the front, because you would only have seen the front on the video, You've got big snarly face there, and American Wealth in London. I've got a, a great poster of that, a vinyl poster of that as well, actually. And that looks brilliant. But on the back, and I, I like this on the back, Beware the Moon. And do you know what would be great on that? To have Brian Glover's face, you know, in the moon. He'd be the Telly T-Man in the moon. And have his flat cap on top of the moon. <laughs> Beware the moon. Anyway, but you found that. But she didn't just find that, she found a, another mask. And yes, another mask. How many hundreds of masks have I got? Well, I pretty much know what I've got. And they're all over the place. There's a few dotted around here. They're, not, they're everywhere. But she said, I found it in the wardrobe. I was like, a mask in the wardrobe? What kind of mask was it? Do you know, it's one of your werewolf things. I went, a werewolf mask, which I've obviously forgotten about because I don't store nothing in the wardrobes. The reason why I never look in the wardrobe, nothing of mine is in the wardrobes. My kilts are all piled up in a big, what I call the kilt wall, which would rival the Great Wall of China as we speak. And yeah, I still want more. But she went, yeah, and I found this mask. So I said, what, what werewolf mask would that be? So where is it? And so she went and got it for us. And then um, I'm going to show you it now. And you know, <laughs> the thing is, what, what it's provided impetus for for this video is that I get many people saying I, I watch your videos and uh, I love the masks uh, where do you get them from and oh, how much are they oh I, I, I can't afford that and you know I completely understand that because truth be told I can't fucking afford them either <laughs> and in fact I, I'm, I'm trying to persuade Mrs Kirkman to let me spend some more of our hard-end shekels on another mask in a few days time but you know i'll win i'll get it don't you worry but uh you know but i do understand uh, and you know the thing about buying these the big you know official ones you know from your trick-or-treat studios your good productions your zagoni or your independent mask makers which are going to char charge you a hell of a lot more or you've got rubies or whoever and uh but i've got cheap masks you know the like smithies and all that kind of shit right and a lot of them are genuinely shit but sometimes you do get a good mask so what this video is really about is that look you know if you want to make or get a get a mask for an occasion halloween your haunted house party your whatever you haven't got to go forking out a lot of money to get a mask which is only going to be aired once and then even great quality is going to be tossed in a wardrobe and forgotten about for decades like this was or you can get a cheapo mask which actually isn't that bad and with a bit of love and care and attention a bit of modification you could make something that's worthy of putting on a stand on a bust on a mannequin head on a shelf 
scale this up and it'll look great. Anyway, hang on. Mm. I always pour one of them, you know, in preparation for the video and then I forget to drink out of it. <laughs> well, anyway, don't mind me while I duck down below. Oh, ah! Why is it when you get older, you automatically grunt and groan when you bend over? Don't make up your own jokes there. Um, but you do, and you're not in any pain. Nothing's happened. I think it's just because you've witnessed people older than you when you were a kid going, oh, and you bend over, or when they get out of a chair, oh, like that. So you reach a certain age, and all of a sudden, it must be in your DNA, it just kicks in, and you start making these involuntary, oh, ah, eh, oof. There's nothing wrong with it. I do it all the time. I bend over, pick someone up, and I go, ah, oh, there's fuck all wrong with me. Anyway, I'd like to introduce you to this long lost pack mate to all my other werewolf masks. Now, don't go expecting this to be, oh, wow, but, but it's a lot better than you think. Hello. Yes, this is my ginger wolf. So he's definitely one of my pack mates. Now, this is no brand that I know of. There is a logo. Where is it now? There is a logo somewhere. And it's under his chinny chin chin down here. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. It says made in China, but you know, fucking hell, you know, isn't everything. And, uh, and there is some kind of weird logo which there's no actual name that I can see. And it's kind of like a lopsided tree going off on an angle with like, or is it a scorpion? Well, there you are. It's a lopsided tree slash scorpion in a sort of big oval shield. But I don't know who that is. I don't recognize the logo. There's certainly no name that I can find anywhere. But this is he. Now, this mask would have been bought a long time ago. Maybe even for one of my kids uh, going to a Halloween party. I can imagine it'd be something like that. Probably my son, and he's 19 now. But I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't have been spending a lot of money on a mask you know, for one of them. No, of course not. I spent money on me. Just, just me. Um, but there he is. He's got these lovely sort of ruby red eyes which actually seem to glow sadly not in the right light here but i think you're getting you, you can just about see what i'm getting at there they definitely do have a kind of cast to them i put it on and in the full length mirror upstairs i'm not telling you which room that one's in um those eyes sparkle and i thought oh oh <laughs> that's pretty good that's actually pretty damn good and the other good thing about this well there's many good things I like the face, I like the design, the ears are pretty good, the latex is very flimsy, it's very thin and soft, but it you know, holds its shape pretty well, um, I've packed it out quite a bit with stuff to keep, you know, because it's got a bit of a smudgy nose where it's been hemmed up against uh, some of Mrs. Kiltman's high heels and stilettos and Nazi boots and all that, <laughs> yes it was in that wardrobe. Um, but he's got a fair bit of detail on him. I love his big furrowed brows, lots of wrinklage, leathery sort of skin effect. The teeth could be better, but they're not bad. You know, you've got you've got detail on the tongue as well. You, and the eyes around the eyes, there's mesh, so you see you your eyes can't be seen from the outside. So when you're looking through that, and this is a nice little a nice little detail which a lot of big name brand masks don't do. It's actually got mesh around them. So, and you've got this lovely, lovely, all over tuft, this mane of hair, which is fantastic. And it's not glued on either. It's actually, let's get some of the baggage out. It's actually one of these sort of Hessian mats, which, it's lovely and comfortable and it's all punched through and stitched into that so that's a great thing as well so none of this fair is going to come out now how many high-end masks 
does the fur or the hair just come loose, come adrift? Far too many. Now, while I've got that on, now, can I just have another quick cursory look just to see if any brands are in there? And you can see the stitching there as well, where this, this mat has been stitched on, and all the fur is punched through onto that mat, which is great. And that, that's comfy. And come a Halloween night, if you're out on the prowl, it's going to keep, going to keep your head nice and warm. These are things to consider. But another thing I, I, I love the face on it. I love the profile. Now, everyone knows how much I love American Wealth in London. But I have, if you troll back through many videos, I do extol the virtues of Joe Dante's The Howling a hell of a lot as well. Because if anything, I prefer, I prefer the tall, upright werewolf to the on all fours beast. Because the on all fours beast is very, very animal-like. You know, you know, it's turned into a hellhound, which is what you know the American elf is meant to be. But in the howling, these motherfuckers stand eight feet tall on two legs, and they are absolutely hideously scary to look at. And I love them. I love the transformation sequence in that. I have discussed the transformations in American elf and the howling and how they're connected many times. I won't rehash all that right now but there is a particular image in the transformation in the howling where Eddie Quist's jaws extend the snout comes out you see it from the side like that and the lower hinge jaw goes and it just seems to go on forever and it just looks absolutely terrifying and I've been trying to find American uh, sorry the howling masks or anything sculpts they exist but they're, they're not official that I've seen and they're very very pricey and very hard to come by as well so but if you're looking for werewolf masks where you've got that sort of I know they've all got a lot of open jaws but I know the look I'm going for and it's the it's the howling look and this guy although his jaws are nowhere near as long he actually has in his own little cute kind of way He's got that howling sort of, you know, big god sort of gaping orifice. He's got that. There are masks um, by Ghoulish Productions who do like a deluxe, I think it's called, I think it's just called the, the Black Wolf. And it does have in the profile that kind of long snout and that great big jaw. Looks great, but they're pricey one day but not for a while um, so I like it for that reason as well it, it does remind me that profile look there is similar to the howling okay he has this sort of fright wig going on but I do like that as well that is such a resplendent lush amount of fairy foliage can't go wrong with that it's just tremendous so what I'm saying to you folks is that you know even a cheap mask can have a lot of virtue and you could work on that. You could obviously, you know, pad this out, wear it, good lighting, you get these eyes to glow, you know, get that nose a bit straighter. That's what I've got to, because it was smushed up in the other wardrobe, obviously. But, and because it's not the best of latex, it's not crap, you know, there's certainly far worse than that. But, you know, it's not holding, It's it's got stuck in that sort of, shape now it take a lot to get it out but you can do it so you've not got to spend the fortune if you want to get some good effective masks just amazon ebay smithies your local joke shop you know anything you'll find these masks especially come halloween time and lo and behold you'll probably find some good ones ones that are probably modeled on the expensive ones and but done on the cheap you know but they've certainly took those ideas so you don't going to be spending a fortune on these things and especially things like this because look at it that's actually really really good i do i love these ears as well i am genuinely impressed with this i'll be honest that face on he ain't the most terrifying side on he's got far more of a sinister aggressive expression and it's all part of that drop jaw you know them gypsies out of here. I don't care how well they can play a tune. Get them out of there, get the fiddlers out of here. 
and I'm not crossing anyone's palm with silver. Not anymore. Not what happened last time was a full moon. Then again. It is kind of infectious, isn't it? But yeah, so there you go. The search for an American wealth in London t-shirt resulted in another werewolf find. Can't go wrong with that, can you? Sorry? Oh, you're saying drink some more whiskey? Okay. Hmm. Oh, you weren't saying that. You were saying put the fucking mask on, kilt man. Okay. Okay. Let's do it then. Let's go into this cheapo. <laughs> cheapo wolf snoutage. Man. See, I'm going to admit it's not the most frightening of masks. It isn't. And this, to be honest, does look like it's just my normal hair. <laughs> but, uh, you, you, you try to imagine your Eddie Quist from The Howling. Uh, don't get too far out of shock, kill man. Uh, Buying expensive masks, kilt man. You can't afford it. You need to buy tins of food for me. See, that's not bad. Ugh. That's not a bad mask. Oh, he says, dropping it. <laughs> but um, I'm just trying to look at this logo again. Maybe somewhere in there there is someone out there may well go. Oh my god, that is the the long lost lycanthropic ginger wolf from Studios. It's worth an absolute fortune. It was discontinued, it was cursed, and he's got one. I don't know. No. Or you might go down to your local toy shop and they've got a whole rack of these hanging there, and one's got black hair. One's got brown, one's ginger, one's a white wolf, you know, and that could be, that could well be the thing. So, folks, there's your challenge now. Tell me who made this. But be honest, that's not bad. You know, if I'd sat here and not done any close-ups, not shown you the innards of this, I could have gone, oh, look at this, this this came from Air Goodish Productions, and it's uh, absolutely fantastic, look at that. You know, you could, maybe it did come from there, maybe that is their old logo, I don't know, I just don't know, and I like the way, because it's flimsy latex, you can do like the old style, you know, animatronics and prosthetic effects of the transformation, you know, with all the air bladders pumping, whoa. effective you and me should go into movies but yeah so there you go folks so this was like a for people and I, I do get this quite a bit people saying I, I, I can't get that stuff or I can't justify paying those prices well you don't have to just get a cheap one if you like the look of it and you could pack this put it on a mannequin's head you know get one of them polystyrene dummy heads Sit it up, put it in the corner somewhere, you know, get a whole collection of these things going, and it will look effective. You know, I don't have to buy the big name brands. Cause I've got tons of like cheapo weird stuff, but I just thought that looks amazing, I'm having that. So, I fancy a bit of gypsy fiddling, you know. So, anyway, folks, there you go. There'll be much partying done tonight. Though, with um, social distancing, no one's allowed to go outside Anfield and really let rip. And they've issued loads of warnings because when it became obvious that 
Liverpool were going to win the league a few weeks ago. They all went down to the pier head. Liverpool's infamous, 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 legendary pier head. Not infamous. They have fireworks and parties and raves and it just it was like a riot. You know, they set fire to the Liver building when they set fireworks off on it against it. So all the police and Jürgen Klopp is going like, uh, please, just party at home, you know, just do all your, your partying at home. We'll be here next time when we can all be together, you know. <laughs> anyway, folks, in the meantime and in between time, please be happy, be safe, be healthy. And if you find cheap masks, you know, don't think, oh, it's cheap. No one's going to, no one's going to like that. No one knows. No one really fucking cares. If you like it, get it. There's the moral. If you like something, you get it. Christ, who's to, who's to blame you? You know, just do it. Makes you happy. Then, if it makes you happy, it makes me happy. When I'm happy, everyone's happy. Except Mrs. Kiltman, who's just staring at me over there going, don't spend any more money. Folks, keep it Celtic, keep it Celtic. I'm going to see you all very, very soon. Cheers, y'all.